Stories of tragedy always have us asking, what if something was different? What if this had unfolded in a different way? Is this fate destined to occur or could someone have broken free and found happiness? Today we will examine one such possibility. For what if Adler was the protagonist of our story? How would things be different and what would change? So with no more delay, let's explore this possibility. His alarm clock rattled away on his nightstand. Its annoying chirp brought his dreamless slumber to a close. He groggily reached out and swiped at it to no avail. Its awful melody still echoed across his room, forcing him to accept that he would have to wake up. Days ago, this wouldn't have been a problem. He would have woke up on the first bell and been ready to work. But with his commander falling ill, the difference between sleeping and spending all day alone in his room was only that in one, he felt alone, and in the other, he felt nothing. He sat up and rubbed his eyes. He looked over at a poster before his bed. He stared at the graceful form of the folk, and just like always, it stared far past him. She'd always been like this to him, distant, borderline cold, as if he was a burden that Aeon had stuck on her. Perhaps he was exactly that, seeing as now that she was sick, all he could do was confine himself to his room and wallow in his failures. He finally willed himself to stand up, though perhaps it was pointless. After all, there was nothing he could do why did he even bother to waste time getting up? He walked over to his desk. His open diary stared tauntingly back at him, informing him of his lack of anything that had occurred over the last few days. He hated this. He hated being pointless. He hated trying to keep his mind off the chaos outside. But what else could he even do? He paced his room. What else could he do? Falk, his commander, was ill, and attempting to understand her mind, which never opened itself up to him, was a pointless endeavor. But there was someone else, another person he had found solstice in talking to, the commander of the Calibri Cadre, Calibri S2301. She was a short little replica, but bold and brave in her composure, and despite her stature, her orders carried weight and purpose. Perhaps she could help him. No, she would have to. He had no other choice and he needed someone, anyone, to talk to. He walked over to the door of his dorm and prepared to exit. Gazing to his left, he saw his old rifle. It was a silly old thing. Way too much firepower for anything the S-23 had to deal with, but it would have to do. He picked it up and walked out into the facility. The halls were quiet. No yules scurrying about, humming simple melodies of classical songs. No storches complaining of the noise. No auras tinkering with wires faintly in the vents beneath you. It was wrong. He kept moving, careful, trying to keep his mind on a leash, else he tempted losing it for good. He arrived at his destination, the door to the Calibri study, and he knocked on the door with a stern tap. Hello, this is Adler. I expect you to open up. Silence. Refusal to comply with my orders is against the facility's rules. And the silence continued. Please, open up. And still nothing. He punched the door. Why wouldn't she answer? For a second, he considered walking away to resign himself to this fate. But then he tried to answer that question. Perhaps she couldn't answer. He stepped back and aimed his rifle. He was going to get inside. The recoil hurt. His shoulders bit from the sheer power of this weapon. It was excessive, but excessive could open a door. He kicked it open and pushed inside, keeping the rifle raised just like he saw the stars do in the past. The truth was, he had no idea what he was doing. Weapons were far outside his training and knowledge. But then again, these days, he never knew what to do, or how to do it, so he stopped thinking about that and instead just did what he thought he should. Looking around the office, he found it empty, but much like his own office, it was in a hard state, messy beyond relief. He chuckled at this, memories of the little replicas scurrying about looking for the paper they want, moving their little step stool around, pleasantly played in his mind. As this happy memory played, he made his way to the door to their bedroom, and thoughtlessly opened it. It was here that the illusion came to a close. How is it that you get people to listen to you? What is that supposed to mean? Well, you aren't exactly intimidating. Just because I'm small doesn't mean people don't respect me. Before Adler lay a monster, his distorted flesh screamed and twitched at him erratically. His presence alone hurt him. Screams bent into his brain and threatened to rip him apart with their song. Sights of an island followed his thoughts, attempting to rewrite them all with its image. 
He fell to his knees, the shooting pain overwhelming him. His nose began to drip scarlet red oxidant on the floor beneath him. Was this his end? Perhaps for the best. He'd failed everyone after all. Hulk, the facility, the Yules. Perhaps everyone was gone now, and yet here he still remained, pointlessly writing in his diary, hoping for a salvation that would not arrive. This monster before him was proof of that, for no god would ever let such a beast exist. A beast. He questioned his own phrasing as he gazed deeper into it. Its short legs, its bi-resonant claw, its location. He may have been pointless, he may have been dying, but he was not dumb. That was a Calibri, and not just a Calibri, it was her, the one for whom he was searching for. He coughed out Scarlet, his vision began to fade. He would not last much longer. He would die, but he would not die alone. He struggled to his feet. Calibri! He planted one in front of the next, the song burning through him stronger and stronger. I am here! With each step the pain grew, he couldn't give up now, sprinted forward and embraced the beast in his arms, its vibrations tearing his mental psyche to shreds, and his body erupting in pain and blood, which only gave way in the presence of the void of death. But he would not let go. He held on. I am here. The world went black as he finished his statement. Adler.